Hi, I'm Sam Adams, the Koch Curatorial Fellow at Decordiva. I'm excited to be able to offer virtual content during the temporary closures of our galleries. Today, I'll be introducing works of collage in the museum. Collage is a strategy for composing an artwork using images taken from different sources. The term comes from the French verb coller, meaning to stick. One of the things I find most interesting about collage is how the juxtaposition of disparate images can potentially unsettle the assumed meanings of its components, leading to interpretations that the image's makers may never have anticipated. There are examples of this form from around the world. For example, Bapo, a, gen a genre of Chinese painting featuring collections of torn paper fragments, was popular in the mid-19th century. Japanese modes of art in this vein date back to the 1100s. In the Western tradition, the Cubist paper constructions of Georges Braque and Pablo Picasso in 1912, known as papier collé, are among the first collages in Europe. German soldiers fighting in World War I a few years later are another commonly cited origin of collage. When writing to their families from the trenches, they were unable to get their gory descriptions of battle past the censors, and so resorted to pasting cutouts from illustrated pet papers into their letters. In 1916, the German artists turned soldiers, George Gross and John Hartfield, experimented prolifically with this method. Hannah Hoch, their peer in the Berlin Dada movement, became widely known for witty and socially progressive collages. Decades later in the United States, Martha Rosler's anti-Vietnam War collages were widely ce celebrated for similar qualities of compositional innovation and political subversion. Contemporary artists continue to use collage to subvert official narratives and offer alternative ways of understanding images that circulate in mass media. Decordiva's current exhibition, Truthiness and the News, includes 62 artworks and pieces of ephemera. I'll speak about three in detail, each of which engages with collage from a different angle. Lorraine O'Grady's text-based collage, Cutting Out, Cutting Out New York Times 3, was first made in 1977 and remade in 2017. It is on loan to Decordiva from the Addison Gallery of American Art at Phillips Academy. It is nearly 42 inches high by 60 inches wide and is part of a larger series. The text reads, the modern artist finding himself with no shared foundation has begun to build on reckless storytelling, star words, and the deluxe, almost everything included, work of art. For several months in 1977, O'Grady devoted herself to a weekly ritual of cutting out words from the Sunday New York Times, including headlines, articles, and advertisements. She arranged them into poems, collaging them onto sheets of paper in a variety of densities and at a range of angles. O'Grady's handling of language as a malleable medium was partially a result of her recent employment as an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Department of Labor and State, which required her to read 10 newspapers daily. But her word collages, amounting to 26 poems in all, are also informed by a class she was teaching back in 1977 on literature of Dada and Surrealism. Artists in both movements engaged with automatic writing, nonsense poetry, and wordplay in order to reveal meanings known only to the subconscious. This was the first work of art that O'Grady produced, marking her transition at the time from literature into fine art. In 2017, she revisited the series, enlarging the text fragments and recollaging them with some alterations. As an African-American woman who was cutting and reorganizing text from one of the most authoritative newspapers of the day, she asserted her subjectivity and authorship at a time when mass media rarely centered the experiences of women of color. This is a great example of how collage can forge realities that are based in humble materials and yet transcend the everyday, imagining a new narrative. Before moving on, I'd like to thank art historian and curator Stephanie Sparling Williams for her scholarship on O'Grady and particularly for helping me understand this piece. Next, I'll introduce a Time magazine cover from July 2018, which is included in a section of the exhibition highlighting cases in which public responses to photojournalism changed the standards of journalistic ethics. 
In summer 2018, Time magazine devoted the cover article to the Trump administration's immigration policy, particularly the controversial separation of children from their guardians. The cover featured a photo of the president taken the year prior in Belgium, collaged onto a red background, towering over a crying two-year-old Honduran asylum seeker, Yanela Sanchez, with the text, Welcome to America. The accompanying article stated that the girl was taken screaming from her mother. After the Getty photographer came forward saying that the girl was never separated from her mother, the chief editor of Time issued an apology, but insisted that the cover image and story nevertheless captured the stakes of the issue. By that time, Sanchez had already become an icon for the Trump administration's policy, and her image had gone viral. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders responded, quote, it's shameful that Democrats and the media exploited this photo of a little girl to push their agenda. She was not separated from her mom. The separation here is from the facts, end quote. The image of Sanchez was also, crucially, separated from the rest of the photo from which it was cut. Breitbart called the fo cover a fake news photo. Although the controversy, again, is not that it was fake, but that it is in fact two photos, or collage. Photography has long been associated with a sense of factual documentation, but photo collage offers a multiplicity of viewpoints that one arrives at based not on what's in the image alone, but rather on how it is contextualized. This is why collage has often been associated with controversy and radical politics, because it can be understood so differently depending on who's looking at it. Finally, de Cordova commissioned the Boston-based composer and filmmaker Sajeda Domino to create an audio installation for the exhibition Truthiness and the News. It has a runtime of about half an hour and plays on a continuous loop in the gallery. Domino's piece engages an acoustic mode of collage known as sampling, the reuse of a pre-existing audio segment within a new audio piece. The term came to prominence in hip-hop hip music of the 1980s. Domino samples news announcements and musical segments from radio broadcasts from the periods referenced by the photos in the exhibition. He includes Glenn Miller singing on an NBC broadcast from 1938, the 1963 hit Only in America, first recorded by the African-American band The Drifters, Martin Luther King speaking on Meet the Press, a special report on the war in Vietnam, and other clips. He splices them together using radio static, as if changing channels. Although the exhibition focuses on the way we process news photographs visually, sound plays a crucial role in the way we think about the news as both urgent and entertaining, due to the specific tones of voice and acoustic elements Domino included. As with the previous two works, this audio piece demonstrates how context can radically change the way we listen to and understand mass media. Thank you for listening. Please catch my colleagues speaking about other works in our galleries.